The latest trailer for Civil War has premiered, and I was, let's say, pretty happy with it. <laughs> but you guys know me, once my initial hype for a trailer has died down, I take out the old magnifying glass and begin to examine the trailer looking for clues, and that goes double for Marvel films, because they love to load their movies up with surprise characters who could possibly set up future movies. I mean, think about it. Years ago, did any of you have any idea that Nick Fury was just going to pop up at the end of Iron Man? And nobody knew what was up with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Winter Soldier until they actually saw it. They kept that under wraps until the movie came out. Marvel knows how to keep the surprises in their movies hidden pretty well. And they've already revealed Spider-Man and Black Panther to us, so that leads me to one simple question. If we've already seen them, who are they keeping secret? Okay, let's get right into it. In case you're new to Thorgy's theories, we always have two theories. One being the sane and rational theory to give us a sense of professionalism, and then we have the crazy theory because, well, it's fun. But we're going to start with the sane rational theory, and for that we need to think, what other characters does Marvel need to set up? Black Panther and Spider-Man have their own movies coming up, so this movie will introduce them to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but who else has a movie on the horizon? We've got Doctor Strange, but even though they made it clear that S.H.I.E.L.D. knew he existed in Winter Soldier, I still can't see the Sorcerer Supreme lowering himself to dealing with political scuffles. I mean, this is a guy who deals with other dimensions and demons. He's got bigger things to worry about. Plus, even in the Civil War comic, he sat it out because he didn't feel it was right to get involved. Then there's the next Thor and Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but that isn't really anything Marvel needs to set up. They're pretty good on their own. And then there's Ant-Man and Wasp, but we already know who Ant-Man is, and the Wasp was set up in his last movie, so we can skip that one for now. And then, of course, there's the Inhumans movie, but there's rumors going around Marvel right now that they might not even make that film anymore, so we're not even going to worry about that. That leaves us with one very clear contender. Captain Marvel. Not only is she, in addition to Black Panther and Spider-Man, one of the most requested characters for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but also her movie comes out the same year as Black Panther, and we haven't heard anything from her yet, while Black Panther has gotten at least a few nods here and there. And you might think, hey, that would be too many characters to introduce in one movie, and you might have a point, but I'm not saying we need to get her origin story or have her out there fighting in that big superhero brawl. No. All we need to do is just introduce her. And Captain Marvel was a pilot, and she did work for the Air Force before becoming a superhero, so you could very easily slip her into this movie just as regular human Carol Danvers working for the military as they try to enforce the Registration Act. And in the comics, she was basically Tony's right hand during the Civil War, so it would make sense for us to at least get a brief cameo of her talking to Tony about his plans. So just looking at it from that angle, it would make a lot of sense for Carol to have a cameo that introduces us to her and gets the snowball rolling towards her own movie. But that's all wishful thinking and speculation. What actual hard proof do I have that this could happen? Well, in the actual footage of the movie, nothing really. I'll admit that for this first theory, most of my reasoning behind it comes from the fact that it would just, well, make sense, and I don't really have much else behind that. Although, I will throw this out there. In 2013, Marvel did change their opening title card. For years, we had had the exact same title card of the exact same comic book panels being flickered before the screen. However, in 2013, they changed which panels we saw right before the movie began, and two new panels popped up in those title cards. The first panel, when you pause it really quickly, you see a missile being fired with Black Panther's symbol on the front. Clearly, they put this in there because they wanted to set up the Black Panther for these future movies. What's the panel that comes right after that? Carol Danvers in her old Miss Marvel costume. So if it stands to reason that they put a Black Panther symbol in there because they wanted to start setting up Black Panther, the fact that Miss Marvel is also in there also implies that they wanted to start setting up Carol Danvers' character. Also, as I said, they changed this title card in 2013, roughly around the time that they started working on a script for Civil War. Almost as if they knew that something was coming in that movie. Now aside from that, I'll admit there really isn't anything else to go on. As I said, Marvel is being really careful with revealing any of the facts about this movie. But to that I have to say, 
Who needs facts when you have the crazy theory? That's right, kids. Put the tinfoil hats on and start connecting random pictures on your wall with some string because we're about to go total conspiracy nuts. Now, in this trailer, we see a giant prison rising out of the ocean. To me, this looks a lot like Prison 42, the prison that Tony created in the Civil War comics to house all the heroes who refused to register, and it looks like this prison will be of great importance to the story. But it wasn't just heroes being kept there. No, during the Civil War, Tony realized he'd need some help tracking down heroes, and who better to hunt heroes than villains? And so, he revamped the Thunderbolts team. Now, you might be asking who are the Thunderbolts, so get ready for a quick lesson. The Thunderbolts were a team of supervillains posing to be heroes to try and gain power and influence, but they decided they actually liked being heroes, and most of them actually stuck with it. However, during Civil War, Tony revamped the team so that now instead of villains trying to turn over a new leaf and be heroes, it was the worst of the worst. The baddest villains in the Marvel Universe going out on missions in exchange for reduced prison time. Now, you might be thinking right now, Aaron, are you actually suggesting that the Thunderbolts will be in this movie simply because we see a prison? Oh no, there are actually way more clues pointing towards this than you might think. First, let's look at the cast of the Thunderbolts and who we see in this trailer. The only actual villain we see is Crossbones, who is decked out in brand new armor and tools, which I assumed was given to him by Hydra, but Hydra doesn't really exist anymore. So could it be that at the end of the Winter Soldier he was wheeled off to jail, and when they need someone to track down Cap and his team, he volunteers? I bring up Crossbones because not only is he in this trailer, but guess what team of villainous characters he actually belonged to for a while? You guessed it, the Thunderbolts. But he's not the only one. Do you remember when they announced that General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross from the Incredible Hulk movie would make a return in this film? Remember how odd that was? I mean, nothing else from the Incredible Hulk movie has come back. Not Betty, not the Abomination, even Edward Norton didn't come back. And yet, now after years of nothing, General Ross is coming back as the one pushing for this registration act. Isn't that odd? Well, not that odd when you look at the comics and you look at the Thunderbolts team, because over the years, that team has gone through many different incarnations, and in their most recent incarnation, they were being led by the Red Hulk. The Red Hulk being the gamma-infused alter ego of guess who? General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. And yes, I am aware of the irony of someone with the nickname Thunderbolt ending up becoming the leader of the Thunderbolts. I, I get that, yes. But that's not all. This brings me to the biggest piece of casting news that points towards this team. As I said, this trailer has made sure to keep a lot under wraps, and that includes Daniel Brühl's character, Baron Zemo. It was announced that he'd be in this movie and that they were keeping his casting a secret, and then it was leaked that the character he'd be playing would be the classic Captain America villain, Baron Zemo. And so far, we haven't seen anything of him or heard about what his importance is to this movie. So could it be that they're trying to keep him a secret? And if so, why? Could it possibly be that maybe he is also tied to this Thunderbolts team? Because as I mentioned, General Ross led the Thunderbolts in their most recent incarnation, but who led the team in its first incarnation? Who was the character that founded that team to begin with? You guessed it. Baron Zemo. That's about all the clues that we've gotten in this movie, but like any good conspiracy theorist, we have to look beyond the movie at the source material. I already mentioned that the Thunderbolts played a large role in the Civil War comic, but there hasn't been a Thunderbolts comic for a couple of years, and even the last version of the book didn't really have anything to do with the whole team of villains concept that defined them in the first place. But this May, the same month that this movie comes out, what book is Marvel suddenly bringing back? Thunderbolts. Seems like an odd time to just bring that book out of the blue, doesn't it? And it goes beyond just the book coming back. In these trailers, it's pretty clear that Iron Man's team is hunting down Bucky, meaning they want to send him to jail. The same jail that I'm theorizing is the headquarters of the Thunderbolts. Now, take a look back at the new Thunderbolts book coming out in May. Who is the newest member of the Thunderbolts? Bucky. So, not only are there clues in the movies and in the comics, 
But let's also step even further back and just look at this from a business point of view. Right now, Marvel is the king of comic book movies, but that's only because they haven't really had any competition. But starting this year, DC is finally going to try and get their cinematic universe rolling, and Marvel ain't having it. Marvel has been screwing with DC ever since they started this cinematic universe. First, DC tried to mess with them by moving Batman vs Superman to the same weekend as Civil War, and Marvel stared them down until they moved to March. So what did Marvel do? They moved the premiere of the second season of their incredibly successful and critically acclaimed series Daredevil to the week right before that. It's pretty clear that the war between the cinematic universes has begun, and what other movie does DC have coming out later this year? One that people are probably even more excited for than Batman vs Superman. Suicide Squad a movie about a group of supervillains in prison that the government puts together to go on missions. Sound familiar? DC is putting so many of their chips on Suicide Squad being a success, so can you imagine how much it would screw them over if three months before that movie comes out, Marvel comes in and goes, oh what's that? A team of villains secretly working for the government to get their sentences commuted? Oh, you mean like the Thunderbolts? The team we put out there first? I'm not saying it would be a nice thing to do, in fact it would be pretty dickish. But this is Disney we're talking about, and when it comes to their competition they can be pretty cutthroat so I can totally see them doing something like that. But that's just me. What about you guys? Do you think that Captain Marvel or the Thunderbolts or anybody else could possibly pop up in this movie? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, then make sure that you share it all around the web. It's the best way to help out this channel. You guys have been doing that a lot lately, and I really appreciate it. Also, come back in a few days for another theory video all about Batman vs Superman. It was supposed to go up today, but, well, after seeing this trailer, I had to get this one out there right away. So, thanks again for watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button, make sure to hit that thumb up, and make sure to come back next time.